What's up guys, I'm Jordy Geller and I'm the holder of the Guinness World Record for the world's largest sneaker collection. Have a look over here at these Nike Zoom Air Anguses. Before Nike was Nike, the company was called Blue Ribbon Sports and they used to import Onitsuka Tiger shoes and sell them out of a van at track meets. Then Nike started making their own shoes and you can see right here a pair of Nike Cortezes alongside the Onitsuka Tiger Corsairs and a lot of the really early Nikes looked a lot like the Onitsuka Tiger shoes. Have a look at these shoes right here. These shoes were made for Steve Prefontaine, who's the soul of Nike. These are called the Pre-Montreal and Nike made these shoes for Steve to run in the 1976 Montreal Olympics. You see four pairs right over here, alongside a couple of bobbleheads, Steve's autograph, and a poster of Steve where he's actually wearing the Pre-Montreals. Before we move on though, I wanna show you what's in this box right here, which is a completely brand new pair of pre-Montreals that's never been laced up. These are amazing. All right, come on over here. I wanna show you my shoes inspired by school supplies. So I always wanted to have an office and have my shoes that are inspired by school supplies and office supplies on display. And that's what we have here. Shoes inspired by the ABCs, crayons, Elmer's glue, whiteout, Bic pens, scantrons, chalk. Check out the number two pencil shoes. These are one of one customs that a famous sneaker customizer made for me. Over here, shoes inspired by composition books and scissors. And then these are inspired by a pack of highlighters. And I'm wearing a pair right now. I went to college at the University of Arizona, so I included some U of A shoes in my back to school section. And then behind me over here are some of my sentimental shoes. I painted all of these right here, and I was inspired by this dunk, which is known as the splatter dunk, and this one's known as the unsplatter dunk. And have a look at these right here. This shoe was painted by Mr. Brainwash, who you may know from Banksy but he splatter painted these. They're one of 11. They're worth about $5,000. Let's have a look at this table right here. These shoes are very, very special to me. These are part of my Dorenbecker collection of shoes. So Nike partners with the Dorenbecker Children's Hospital and allows children to design shoes. And that's what you're looking at here. These right here are one of 11 pairs and the only pair of size 11s in the world and these shoes are known as What the Dornbeckers, and they're a mishmash of all the other shoes that you see on the table right here. Even more rare than these are these Dornbecker Dunks, and they actually light up. Nike only made two pairs of these, that's it. They sold at auction, one of them went for $26,000. Pop the other light on over here. Very, very cool. All right, come on back here and have a look at my fish shoes. All of these shoes were inspired by fish and sea creatures. You've got Nike Dunks inspired by Orca Whales, Dunks inspired by Sharks, Air Max Pluses and Kobe's inspired by Sharks. A lot of the artwork that you see here was done by my two-year-old daughter. Come on over here, these are inspired by Abalone and Pearl Foam Posits and Air Jordan 4s. These were inspired by salmon. These are called Gone Fishing Foam Posits. And have a look at the lobsters down here. So we've got red lobsters, blue lobsters, and the very coveted yellow lobsters. These are worth about $20,000. There's only three dozen pairs of these shoes in the world. Next to the lobsters, we've got shoes inspired by crawfish and crabs, and up top, octopus inspired shoes, dunks, Kobe's, turtle dunks over here, and even more fish shoes. I wanna walk you around right here to this table. This is the history of Air Pack. When I was a kid, my dad used to run marathons. He ran 10 of them, and he ran a lot of them in Air Max shoes. This is the very first Air Max, and you can see that it has a visible air window right here. They originally came out in 1987, and these shoes changed the game. What you're looking at here is the evolution of Nike Air. And 
year after year, the air bubble got bigger and bigger and bigger. This is the Air 180. They call it 180 because you can see visible air going 180 degrees under the sole. These were my dad's favorite shoes when he was running. And we'll skip all the way up here to the Air Max 360. And you can see right here, 360 degrees of visible air. So this pack celebrates the growing of Nike Air. Come over here, I wanna show you some more Air Maxes. These ones are really sentimental to me. This pair is one of five. It comes in a giant air bubble and it's autographed by Tinker Hatfield, who's the greatest sneaker designer of all time. I mentioned that my dad's favorite pair of running shoes was the Air 180. These are actually his shoes. And you can see right here, pictures of my dad running in them. If you look really closely, you can see he's wearing those shoes. And this is his marathon shirt from 1992 that he wore after he finished the race. Over here, some Air Max 97s. These are my favorite Air Maxes of all. And I had these shoes autographed by the designer, Christian Tresser. One of the cool things of living in Portland, Oregon, is this is the sneaker mecca of the world. And so a lot of the designers and executives responsible for all of this stuff live here. And I've had an opportunity to meet and make friends with a lot of them. Let's wrap around and have a look over here at some Air Jordans. My name is Jordan Michael Geller, so I've always felt a really strong connection to Michael Jordan, and I always wanted his shoes. When I was growing up, my parents would not buy them for me because they were way too expensive. But then when I became an adult and had some of my own money, I started buying them. I actually never intended to collect sneakers. It's just that when I was a kid, I really, really wanted all of these shoes, and then finally as an adult, when I had the money to get my hands on them, I couldn't even fathom wearing them because to me they're art and I just wanted to keep them perfect and collect them. Over here is a pair of band Air Jordan 1s. These shoes are very sentimental to me because believe it or not, Nike actually banned me from shopping at their stores. For about 10 years, I used to buy shoes at the Nike outlets and resell them on eBay and Nike got wind of this and they banned me. They sent me a couple of letters, one to my office and one to my house, and the gist of the letters is that Nike will no longer sell me products, they won't take returns from me, and I'm not allowed to talk to anyone at Nike about these letters. This is actually what inspired me to build the Shoeseum. When Nike banned me, I thought, wow, what am I gonna do? I've got this big giant warehouse, and at the time when they banned me, I had 15,000 pairs of shoes. I decided that I was gonna sell off all those 15,000 pairs and convert the warehouse into the world's first sneaker museum. Over here is another very special pair of Air Jordans. These are Air Jordan 1s from 1985 and they're game worn and signed by Michael Jordan. At one point, I actually had 600 pairs of Air Jordans. I had every single Air Jordan retro that Nike ever made all brand new in boxes, all in my sizes. I've sold off most of those and the shoes that I've kept are the ones that are really special and sentimental to me. Have a look back here at these Nike pumps. These are called the Nike Air Pressures. This is an original pair from 1989. These are the shoes that made me fall in love with Nikes. When I was in seventh grade, Nike came out with these shoes and I wanted them so badly. They were $190 and there's no way that my parents were gonna buy them for me. They came in this really cool case, and as a seventh grader, there was nothing I wanted to do more than show up to school like this with fresh pumps on my feet, but there's no way that was gonna happen. Get this, these pumps actually deteriorate and crumble over time. So when you look closely at the midsole, you can see little cracks right there, and it's starting to fall apart right here. That's the reason why these shoes are shrink wrapped. I just wanted to keep them together as much as possible. Interestingly, a couple years ago, Nike retroed the air pressure for the first time ever, and they came shrink wrapped. I can't ever think of another pair of Nikes that came shrink wrapped from the factory. So that's a pretty cool detail. And then lastly, here's an original track suit that matches the 1989 air pressures. Very cool. Let's work our way over there. I wanna show you some more sentimental Air Jordans. So 
My first Air Jordans were the Air Jordan 11s. Here's an original pair from 1996. My parents would not buy me Air Jordans when I was a kid because they were too expensive. So I had to wait until I was away at college and use some of my own money to buy them. I wore my first Air Jordans for about four or five years and then I actually sold them on eBay. It was the first thing I ever sold on eBay. And back in those days, I didn't even have a digital camera. So I had to take real pictures and get them developed to sell the shoes. I ended up getting married on 1111. And of course the Air Jordan 11 is my favorite of all the Air Jordans. So my wife and I wore matching Air Jordan 11s. We broke them out, fresh dead stock pairs, and I've never worn them since. And then at our wedding, I surprised my wife with these two pairs of Air Jordan 11s that were customized by Tinker Hatfield. So you can see right here, it says for Natty from Jordy. Right here is Disneyland. My wife loves Disneyland. We met at Zappos. Here's a wedding ring. My wife's allergic to nuts, but I'm the biggest nut of them all. So Tinker Hatfield drew my name, a nut and a wedding ring. My wife loves turtles and we met in Vegas and then Tinker signed the shoe. And then he did the same thing with a pair for me. We visited 60 Nike factory stores on a cross country trip. There's Minnie Mouse and it says Natalie underneath there. Tinker drew my logo, wrote Shoeseum and a Nike swoosh. So these are needless to say, very, very special to me. Also over here, is a pair of Air Jordan 11 Lowe's that were worn by Michael Jordan. I was gifted this pair of shoes by Judd Bushler's dad. Judd played with Michael Jordan on three of his six NBA championship teams. These are a holy grail. Down here, we've got 50 pairs of moon shoes. We recently celebrated the 50th anniversary of man walking on the moon, and I collected a whole bunch of different shoes inspired by the moon, and that's what you see over here. Come on over here, and let's have a look at some more vintage stuff. So we mentioned earlier that Nike started off importing Onitsuka Tigers. So here is an Onitsuka Tiger Marathon, and then here is a Nike Marathon. And you can see the shoes are almost identical, except that these are branded Nikes and these are branded Onitsuka Tigers. Believe it or not, I actually won this pair of shoes on eBay and the second high bidder was Nike. Over here is an original waffle iron from the 1930s. The first major innovation at Nike was the waffle sole. And Bill Bowerman, who was the co-founder of Nike, invented it using his wife's waffle iron which was a waffle iron just like this. This shoe was buried in Bill Bowerman's yard alongside his original waffle iron. Have a look at the outsoles right here. That sole was inspired by waffles. Bowerman was creating sheets like these to put on the bottom of shoes. And that's what you see right here is a pair of Onitsuka Tigers that were resold with waffle soles. Come on over here, I wanna show you the vintage couch. Here's a bunch of vintage shoes from the 70s and early 80s. Here's another pair that I won on eBay and beat Nike. They're in University of Oregon Ducks colors. These are absolutely brand new. Look at those gorgeous waffle soles. I wanna show you another really fun pair of waffles. These are called LDVs. There's the waffle soles. And this right here is called a Nike Disco, which has the same upper as an LDV, but Nike removed the waffle soles and made these shoes for disco dancing. Check out those red and glittery soles. Very, very cool. And while we're looking at these funky soles, here's another pair of dancing shoes. And let's look at the soles on these. Swooshes, hundreds and hundreds of swooshes. You know I love these shoes. So when we started out, I mentioned that I'm in the Book of Guinness World Records for the world's largest sneaker collection. I'm actually gonna be in the Book of Guinness World Records again because last week I broke another world record. I sold the most expensive pair of sneakers at auction. They went for $437,500. Check these shoes out right here. You're looking at four pairs of vintage original Nike moon shoes. 
These shoes were owned by Mark Covert, who was the first person to ever cross a finish line wearing Nike waffles. And these were the shoes that he wore when he crossed that finish line in the 1972 Olympic trials. This is the identical model shoe that I sold last week at Sotheby's for $437,500. It shattered the previous world record and more than doubled it. These shoes show the evolution of the Nike Moon shoe and Nike's first innovation, which was the waffle sole. And I'm so lucky to have them. These are my favorite pair of shoes in my collection.